All right, um, welcome. Thank you for, for coming for the fourth uh, session of this series. Um, I'm Lauren, uh, Manager of Outreach and Public Programs at Public Art of the University of Houston System. I'm pleased to be introducing this collaboration again. Uh, this is session four of the Soundscape Student Workshop with Amos Cochran, organized by Public Art in partnership with the University of Houston's Brain Center at the Cullen College of Engineering and the College of Technology. Uh, Amos's uh, color field outside in is currently on view at the University of Houston main campus as part of the exhibition color field and will be on view through May 31st, 2021. We're looking forward to further discussion about uh, art, sound, and the brain. Thank you so much. Thank Lauren. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Great. So um, first of all, thank you, Amos, for, um, Amos for uh, sending us uh, some some samples of, of your yeah, grammar sign. Absolutely. And uh, so I'm gonna uh, ask a share whether he could do something with that. Um, and let me, let, let me just get, uh, do we have all access to share screens, uh, Lauren? Uh, a what? To share a screen, can we all share a screen? Oh, that's a brick yes. question, yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to send the files to the participants here if you want to uh, work with that. Uh, I'm going to send a Dropbox file to you. Um, yeah, so Pepe, I, I actually tried uh, the, tried a few things yesterday on how to synchronize this thing. Um, you know, the Muse, they they changed their uh, process support in the last year, right? Um, so uh, the currently, the way we can read the data is only comparable with the latest version. Uh, they, they dropped the support for the older devices. So uh, I couldn't figure out how to do simultaneously at this moment. Uh, so maybe what we could do is, um, similar to the color field, we can manually do some triggering. Um, OK. So, I so <laughs> what, what, yeah, that would be fine. Uh, so maybe what we should do first, well, I don't know. Should, should we play back the, um, the sounds yeah. and then see, and then you can go through the process of setting on yourself one of these headsets so that, that, that people haven't seen it can 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 see yeah. it. And, and then we can we can uh, start playing the, the yeah, play playing back the sounds and looking at some of the brain activity yeah um right so i guess some of you have the headset right I, i'll just walk you guys through this again um so this is the particular type of headset that we have it's a four channel system uh, so if you if you look on the back, there are some uh, silver plates on the back. Uh, now there are two sensors here which measures your brain activity from the frontal part of your head, the frontal lobe, and there are two rubber flaps uh, which can be seen here. These are also sensors, so they pick up activity from your uh, the side of your head, the temporal parietal, uh, this particular region, right? So this is a uh, wireless system and it's very easy to set up. Uh, the device that we generally use are, we put some gel, uh, it takes a lot of setting time, uh, like few minutes, uh, 30 minutes, etc. But this is like plug and play, you, just, you can just wear it and you're good to go, right? Uh, so that's the advantage of the system, but again, it's limited by the coverage that it can offer. Um, I mean, I, I can just walk you guys through again how to do this. Um, Let me this, just uh, make, a, make a comment if uh, you yeah. don't mind, yeah. So, So these are only four channels. It also has an accelerometer, so it can, it can sort of follow your head movements. And this is important in case you, you, know, you, you get into, into you know, sound body coordination, right? Uh -huh. uh, or interaction. Now, I think this has said uh, it's a good starting point because it captures information from uh, you know, sens sensory areas in cortex that are related to sound processing. And, and we want that because we're we in the sound domain, right, in the auditory domain. But also has, has uh, brain signal related to higher cognitive practices, right? So what, what does the brain uh, do with, with, with uh, the sounds, right? Um, and it may take some decisions, it may, you know, bring some memories, it may, you know, uh, affect behavior, right? So, so we have sensory versus cognitive kind of uh, uh, area that, that we can capture with this particular device. So I think, I think that's a good, a good uh, um, um, compromise in terms of having a limited number of channels, but, but still having this type of comparison with uh, areas in, you know, in the back versus the front of the head. 
So sorry for the interruption. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I guess uh, the people who have the headset would sort of know how to kind. Do I need to explain that once more? Or, or? Yes, yeah, I think it would be good because I'm also, uh, we're planning to send him a headset. And okay. I, I don't know if she has uh, uh, seen this before. So, so okay. yeah, let's just. I okay. don't have a headset though. I don't know. Actually, is a... you know, we, we are recording this, so this may help uh, you know, people that see, uh, watch this recording. Yes. Right. Sure. Uh, this is sort of exciting for me because all I've heard is that there is a thing that is a headset. I haven't seen anything. So as much, it's all okay. sort of exciting. So yes, if anything you want to explain, know that I'm learning from it. Okay. Sure. Just uh, to emphasize that this is an entry-level headset, which we right. have used for research in the past. They are, they are more sophisticated, but I think these are good starting points here. Right. No, I think so. I mean, I think we were, we're starting in much smaller blocks than originally, uh, I thought, right. which is great. Okay. So, right. So, uh, yeah, Jared. Well, actually, so you're going to explain how to set up for this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, today in this session, uh, there is no gonna, there, nobody's going to be wearing one and actually doing it in real time. Um, so right. we'll be yeah, collecting yeah. the data. Uh, I'll be collecting the data for sure, uh, and I'll show you how to record the data right now. Uh, the real-time aspect, as I said, it, it it's a bit more uh, involved. We we need to figure out how to do that with this system. Uh, it's a it's a it's a different system that we used to use. Um, so the real-time aspect, we still sort of need to work on it a bit more on that. Now there but, are some. Uh, if some of you had a headset, you are welcome to bring it and use it because you have copies of the recording. So you can also explore. So Christian and, and, and uh, others, you know. Okay. Hey, actually, I have a quick yes. question. I know yes. I sent I sent you, and if we can't do this, it's fine. But I had sent you another audio file this morning. Um, yes. And I wondered yeah. if that one is possible to check out today too, because it's much more of a complex. It'd be nice to do this initial one. Right. And because it's just it's so simple, but then listen to that other one as well, because it's much more complex. I'm just sort of curious that the. the um, initial differences between those two. Definitely, I, mean, I, I think I, I think I have it saved, so we'll play it after after the first two sessions. After. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna do that afterward. Uh, right. So just to update you guys, whenever you get a headset, you'll be getting one tablet and one of these headsets, right? Uh, so how this is set up is this: uh, uh, the four channel system is going to stream wirelessly using Bluetooth to your tablet. Now this can be a computer or this can be a tablet or whatever, right? So whenever we ship something, we'll have both of them together. And the first thing that you need to do is uh, on this on this headset, on the side of it, there is a button. Uh, okay, it's gonna be hard, a bit hard. There's a button here, uh, like a circular button, which is basically the power on button. So what we first do is uh, long press it. And you see the light comes on on the headset. And if you see, if you if you watch closely, it's going to uh, the light is going to move up and down, which basically says that it is looking for devices to connect to, right? At this point, what we do is uh, we take the tablet and we've already added a few files inside here, which is to uh, receive the data, uh, save the data, and visualize the data in real time, right? So the first thing that you, it's going to be hard to uh, see it in here right now. Uh, the first thing that you need to do there is this. A uh, file called Muse IO shortcut on the tablet. This is going to be the same for all the tablets. Uh, Muse IO shortcut. It is to pair with your device and actually connect to your particular headset. So I initially start by clicking that. Uh, right. So it's going to be like a, a command window thing. There's some screen coming uh, going to come up, and it's going to say TCP error, uh, and that's a good thing. Even though it says error, it's a good thing that we want. Uh, it, now that says that it is right now connected with your uh, headset. Uh, now the tablet and the and the headset is not paired. The next step we do is we go to something called Muse Saver. There is another uh, icon on the on the desktop called Muse Saver. From this point onwards, your uh, headset is going to be streaming your data to your tablet. Now this is being saved in your in your local as a local copy in your tablet. Uh, it's already uh, started to uh, send the data, and uh, you should check that uh, in that screen there is there's some the last line is going to be playback time, and it's going to say uh, it's going to be like a running time, like 
12.9 from the start of the uh, recording hey, Akshay, it's going to say uh, sorry to can you move the tablet because everything you're pointing to Oops. we can't see there oh, we yeah, go i'm sorry okay that's better thank <laughs> right. you so much yeah my bad uh, no, that's why it was just like right off everything you pointed to was like right off right <laughs> <laughs> all right okay Oops. Right, let, let me try to see if I can zoom into this. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So this is how the yeah. screen is going to be. And at the end, uh, the, the line is going to be playback time. It basically says how much time has elapsed after you started the recording. And there's going to be a timer, which, which basically is going to be running. If it's not running, that means there is something wrong with the connection. Uh, the Bluetooth the connectivity might be wrong. So just uh, close this and start this again. So just to recap, right, what we did is first initially we uh, opened Muse IO, which is to connect with your headset. Uh, so once the TCP error uh, thing comes, it means that the headset is now paired. The next step is we open Muse Saver, which starts recording your data onto the uh, tablet we have. Uh, after that, there is a separate one called Muse Time uh, Trace V2 on the, on the tablet, Muse Time Trace. Uh, so in all the tablet, it's going to be in order. So the the uh, from top to bottom, it's going to be in the same order. So it, it's going to be easier to see uh, when you get the tablet. In the Muse time trace, you double click that. Uh, give me one second. So you're going to see something like this, right? Uh, once you have that, you're going to have a screen that looks like this. Uh, now, if you see on the bottom left, uh, there is a circle, which basically is indicative of your uh, head. Uh, if you see, there are some ears and the nose pointing thing. Um, and there's like four red lines, right? That corresponds to the four sensors. And the blue lines that comes out of it is how the easy traces are. I mean, the, the how what the data looks like. On the top, there are three uh, lines, green, uh, blue and red that corresponds to your head movement data. So these are some of the data that you'll be streaming from the sensors. The next, uh, so right now it's basically garbage data because you're not connected to the uh, the sen uh, headset. So I'll show you how to fit the headset onto your head. Right now we, we, we've uh, finished all the process of connecting the data and saving all the data and everything. Uh, the next step is uh, actually fitting the headset on. Now if you see, uh, in this headset, this this the side is actually extendable. So if I just press in, it can actually go in. If you pull it out, it can actually go out. So this is adjustable on both sides. Right, I show that once again, it, it actually goes in and it actually can come out. So this is completely adjustable. And how we fit this is, it goes like this, uh, similar to an elf um, ring or something like that, right? Goes over your ear, uh, ear on the side. Uh, this this part will go behind the ear, and uh, the front part would should be on the top of your head. And then you place your uh, index finger on the front and your thumb on the side, and you can adjust it. Uh, you basically move, uh, push it in uh, to make sure it is uh, fits snugly, and you can adjust it such that. All right. Uh, so what are we trying to do when you adjust this? Right. Uh, I talked uh, actually, about let the me, sensors. Let, let, let me make a comment. Yeah. Uh, before that yes. so to improve the the quality of the signal um, i recommend that uh, to use a you know alcohol pad to clean you know the parts of, of your head that are going to be in contact with the sensors um if you may have makeup there or you may have hair or or, or anything right depending depending uh, what time of the day you're using it so so a uh, little uh, you know cotton with a little alcohol uh, cleaning heat on, on the back of the ears will do great things for the signal quality. So that's, that's one, one tip. And also it's very important that, as I just said, that you press so that you can adjust the headset. I will actually go further and recommend wearing a stretchable band on top of that to ensure that it will not move, right? So I don't know you have those stretchable bands so with you, actually, you can show. Uh, and uh, put it on top. Yeah, because that that will help. Particularly, you're moving, right? You are seated probably 
you don't need it, but uh, or if you tend to move your head, you know, follow music or whatever, then I would suggest uh, uh, using also this headband that we will provide. Yeah. So we, we also have this headband. Uh, it might be a bit tight. So when you're sitting, it's it's not too bad. But if you're walking around, you definitely need something like this because this is going to pop out. Uh, so the data is going to be very bad at that point. right? Um, for now, I'm going to just keep it as it is without the uh, headset. But you can, if you feel like your data is bad, and and let me, let me stop there and say what do you mean by bad, right? Uh, if you remember in the previous, uh, previously when I showed you the tablet, the lines were all red, right? Now it's all green. Now that in, that indicates that the sensor is making good contact with your scalp or your head. Uh, now I'm going to try to move this a bit and see what, what is going to happen. See, now I, I slightly moved on the one of the headsets and now the sensor is going red, right? Now that shows that the headset is not making good contact with the head. Uh, so you need to adjust such that all the four lines are now green. Uh, adjust in such a way that it, it becomes green. You can see it's it's slightly coming up. Uh, three of them are now green. Now there is one more that needs to be green. So I just press this again. Right. So you see the difference in the time time trace. Until until the middle of it, it was all very high amplitude things. But as soon as it becomes green, it becomes very less. It's now picking up like good signals. Uh, so you need to make sure that all the four uh, part of the signals are green. At this point, you are streaming the data uh, pretty well. Let me try to zoom in a bit more. And if uh, I want you to look, uh, I mean, it's it's going to be hard for me to show my face and the screen here. But uh, whenever I blink, I want you, I'm going to say I'm blinking and just check the screen. Uh, right, I'm going to blink now. See that spike happening there? So that corresponds to this headset picking up the blink, eye blinks. I'm going to do you blink, two blinks. Can you blink three times in a row so that they can see that? In uh, my image is broken. I don't know if you're. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Akshay, you froze. You blinked your eyes three times and now you're frozen. Right. So. <laughs> okay, you're back. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I think I. <laughs> can, can, can you blink? Three, can, can you rest? Close your eyes. Yeah. And then blink three times. You can see, see three. Yeah. yeah, you can see them. I got you. Right. So basically, you know, uh -huh. what you're recording are, are oscillations in, in, in the brain, right? And these oscillations, you know, they, they go as low as, you know, once every 10 seconds on this headset, right? Uh, to maybe um, you know, 100 uh, times per second. So that, that's the type of, of brain oscillations that, that we can capture across the brain. And, and these oscillations, they vary in terms of the amplitude, in terms of uh, the location, uh, the, 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 the phase, the, 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 the timing difference between oscillation across the channels and, and things like that. So, and this is where the information is contained, right? So for example, um, if we look at slow oscillations, you know, say between so once every 10 seconds to, you know, to uh, uh, four, four times per second, um, we find that, that information about movement in 10 is encoded in the amplitude of these oscillations across the brain, right? So um, uh, and if sometimes uh, for more cognitive tasks, these oscillations tend to be predominantly in the higher range, you know, between 30 and, you know, uh, 100 hertz or 100 times per second. So you know you 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 could think about the the brain uh, as a collection of radio stations, right? Say 
AM amplitude modulator or FM frequency modulator, right? So, you know, you may have your care and your radio is still that, right? Um, now you have satellite radio and all that, but, but you look at the AM and FM, right? So basically you, you move the node in the radio to go from one station to the next by changing the, the carrier, right? So the carrier is the frequency, you know, 92.5 megahertz, right? And you get one station, you go to 102.5 megahertz and you get a different station. And each station has different information. One is playing the news, one is playing music, one is playing something, right? And so what we do, with this information is we, 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 we see this as a collection of stations where different stations in the brain have different type of information. So for movement intent, we look at the very slow frequencies, right? That's, that's our station for movement intent. Uh, you move higher up, then you start to gain all the type of information, right? And, and of course, the question is, how do we know which station is carrying what information, right? That's, that's a question in neuroscience, right? The other, even if we know which station is carrying uh, a specific type of information, then the next question is well, how that information is encoded, right? So there are, for example, amplitude modulation or AM and this frequency modulation or FM, right? So we need to know whether it's AM or FM, right? Because if the information is, is in AM, which is amplitude modulation, that means the information, the information is encoded in the fluctuation in the amplitude of these oscillations, right? But we are looking uh, information that actually is representing the frequency domain, where the information encoded on how fast this oscillation go, then we will never be able to get that information, right? So, so there, are, you know, we are like detectives trying to figure out, you know, how the information is encoded. We are trying to break the code, basically. That's what we do, right? And and so, um, uh, in this case, we have four channels, right? And we'll get information between say 0.1 hertz and 100 hertz, right? And, and so we need to figure out, you know, how in this case, how specific uh, sounds will affect each of these stations, right? Trying to figure out where to look for the information we want. So that's, that's a very, you know, that's an analogy, but I find it maybe, maybe useful to, to explain how we go about, you know, detecting information uh, on the brain waves. Any questions so far? Yes. So if you're the master detective, then go ahead and give us the punchline. Where is the information? Well, that depends on what information you're looking for. Okay. I, I, ah. So, so, so I can tell you, I, we, we can tell you that, that we have broken the code for information about move, movement intent, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you want to move your finger or your hair or, or stepping or you know, movement, right? Right. We know, we know which station, we know what frequency, we know what's the code, right? We use that information to develop brain machine interfaces to machine, mm -hmm. right? Brain interface to machine. Now, if we are looking for emotional information, we're looking for other aspects, then it probably is in a different station, right? And so when we start playing these sounds, we will characterize the system with the intent of breaking the code, right? And, and so, for example, you know, we, we might see that a specific channel have the largest change in, in, in some space. It could be amplitude, could be frequency, could be something else, right? So it will make sense to look there first because those channels are most sensitive to this stimulation, right? Um, uh, but that, that requires analysis, right? Um, um, also, uh, um, again, I say location, amplitude, frequency, also how these different channels send information to each other. That's what's important, right? So, so, so you know, because our brain, the different parts of the brain don't work on their own. They, they also, they always work in, in, a, in concerted manner, right? I, I like to, to think about neural activity across the brain as a neural symphony, right? Where different elements are, are responsible for specific aspects, right? And so we, we are listening to all this element. So back to my question. Yeah. What are we looking for? And go back to you being the master detective that already broke one code, which is the intent of movement. So when you were breaking that code, did, were you able to find the communication between the different channels? that happened for, for, for the intent of movement? 
Right. So we were able to know how the information is encoded, what parts of the brain were responsible as a network, different areas, uh, with what timing we were uh, able to predict that. Remember, we are able to predict here what's going to happen later. Right. Right. It's intense, yeah. right? And, and so um, uh, in, in this case, you know, this is one of the first time we work with sound. Mm -hmm. We had done, we are working on a, on, on a, on a paper uh, where we had a collaboration with three musicians that were improvising, right? And, and we were looking at brain to brain communication in that particular experiment. Because when you are a musician in a band, you read the body movement, you read the face, you read the body, right? And you know when to come in or out, when to override, how to take turns, things like that. So we're looking at brain to brain communication, right? Uh, to understand the dynamic process of how you improvise, right? We are not doing here that, no at least yet, right? What we're trying to, to, to identify is how a specific grammar of sound affects these four channels, right? But also, you know, and this is maybe sometimes unconscious, maybe to, to the sound, your body will start to respond to it, right? Your brain is responding right. or your body is responding. And, and then you may or not produce some movement. You may know, may or not uh, uh, couple with the sound. And, and so, because we have a, a motion sensor on the head, we could also determine that, right? So, so right now we are characterizing, we plan to characterize these sounds to see what is the effect, which is the first step to breaking the code, right? Yes, thank you. Now, 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 for closing the loop, uh, of course, the ideal plan would be break the code, close the loop, because we know what we know what is the best way to affect your brain, and we know we know how to do it, right? But we don't need to wait to that moment to close the loop. No, for example, if we see that you know, a specific sound has the the highest impact. So we know something about the sound, right? We, we can analyze the, the characteristic of that sound. Certainly the composer will know, yeah, you know, this, this type of sound has the highest effect on this brain. So I can produce more of this type of sound. I can change it different ways to modulate that response, right? And then we could take that response to close the loop, right? So that 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 the the brain can in turn affect uh, the what what is being uh, uh, what the brain is being uh, is listening to, right? Um, uh, but but the, the idea scenario would be breaking the code so that we can find the best feature or features the, the best things that we know uh, encode that sound in your brain, right? Now this is and um, and we can talk a lot about this, but just uh, let me just say one more thing, right? So. When, when you think about a sound, you know, you may focus on the aesthetic properties of the stimulus, right? But it may be a trigger that reminds you of something, that experience you had in the past. That goes beyond the aesthetic component, right? And it may bring you to a time, right? Even, you know, it may bring you to, to that time. And, and, and you might associate that with other, other things like color or taste or, you know. So there are people that have, um, you know, this is known as synesthesia, right? So I, I think you know that, you know, that, that, that there are chefs that prepare food and when they see a specific color, they stop and when they see a geometrical shape in their mind, they think this is right, this is perfect. You know, so our brain tries to associate sensory stimuli right B because when when you see an apple you smell an apple you hear an apple as you are eating the apple the apple is in one country maybe that was the apple that your best friend gave to you you, you know so so a representation in the brain is created over time and it's not related only to uh the appetitive aspect of that object but everything around that right so this sound which is an acoustic stimulus, 
may have an impact. It might be associated with memories, smells, taste, you know, movement, and many other things. So when you encode that sound, the, the reason we can remember these things, right, is because this representation for a specific sound that somehow had an impact on you is able to trigger a whole, you know, I would say a, a whole context, right? That make it very hard to forget, right? If, if a sound doesn't really have an impact on you, you will not remember it. It, it doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah, it does, if you don't like it, you, I mean, the first thing is looking at a sound at the, at the pure aesthetic value for you, right? If, no, you, 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 you may like the specific singer, right? Uh, uh, because it make you happy or, or put you in motion or, or trigger your creativity or what, what have you, right? And, and so that singer, that music, that voice triggers so many things that, that is representing your brain. You may have another singer that doesn't have any impact on you and you tend to forget, you, you don't want to replay again or you, you just forget, go to the next one, right? So here, you know, so initially we want to see what's the effect of sound on the brain, right? But we, we need to remember that that particular sounds may have, may bring access to, to higher cognition, right? That open a window in your mind, right? And, and this, is, this is very interesting, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and a subject of research, right? And of course, we, we can limit, okay, you know, what aspects of this access we want to harness for closing the loop, right? Um, and, and so that was a very long answer. <laughs> Doesn't the fact that the Muse only has four channels, isn't it already doing that for us, limiting the, 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 what we can study about there yes, was... of course, because we don't have access to the full brain, but uh, as I said at the beginning, we have two more sensory versus two more cognitive. So that gives you some degrees of freedom, right? To, to, the, the, you know, we are just trying to, 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 to show, uh, um, some of you may for the first time, this type of waveforms, right? And may when, when you have your headset, you can look at your own uh, brain wave and, and, you know, you can pair it with a phone that you want. And you can just walk around and see, you know, start to relate, right? Start to relate to the brain activity, right? Right. For, for example, um, as, as I think we were discussing the other day, it, no, if you are into meditation or you know, mind, you know, how you call it? Uh, um, mindfulness. Well, you, yeah, mindfulness, right? Uh, uh, just... The, the, the response of the brain typically is to increase oscillations in the alpha range, which is between 10 to 12 times per second. And, and these things become really strong. And sometimes, you know, in, in, in people that have practiced this for many years, it, it, it basically um, it spreads out through the brain, right? And you focus more internally, right? On what's happening within yourself and your body, right? And, and this thing you can see, and you can use this brain wave that you're looking in the tablet to provide feedback so you can focus and increase that and learn. This is called neurofeedback, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so there are many companies that are now harnessing that to, you know, to, to help people to meditate, right? To be in this state of, of calm and, and you know. And, and Ali, I, I can talk, talk about this at too great length because he's a, he's a very good meditator. But, um, um, uh, but, but, but yeah, so we are limited, yeah. Um, but they see we have, we have a lot of information uh, that we can learn from this. So I wanna know something for Amos's sake. Is, is there any way to have, um, to have that tablet that actually, since it actually has a muse, to yeah. have a tablet in front of us and play anything that, that Amos has sent and let us watch Actually, yeah, right. yeah. Actually, it's gonna do that. That's that's yeah. So the the only comment that I made is that uh, ideally you want to to play exactly at the same time. You, you want a program to control both the news headset and the playback. Right. He will need to do it today manually. 
Right. Which means there's going to be a difference of perhaps a few milliseconds. Right. But that's okay. You know, I think I think we uh, uh, we would like to hear you know, the the sounds and uh, start looking at the brain waves. And and if all that you know, Chris, you have a headset, you're welcome to wear it and, and see what happens. Right. And I don't know if I, I um yeah actually I, no uh, um uh, Alex Alex you have one too yeah uh, I've got several yeah yeah cool. okay so let's uh, go back to what you. Right. Uh, just, just one comment. I mean, um, yeah. so when we see the time series, I, I just want to make it absolutely clear, right? I mean, yeah. oftentimes you find these patterns in the computer, right? This, as I said, this EEG is measuring your the electrical activity that your brain is producing being picked up by the scalp, right? So there's a lot of artifacts, everything on top of it. So typically we do a lot of cleaning on the computer. So we 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 magnify the signal and suppress the noise, right? So if you just look at the data, a lot of what we generally look for won't be evident. So just wanted to put a disclaimer on there, right? Um, most of the work would actually happen in the computer to magnify the signal information there. Um, so Pepe, should I just play the music first uh, for everyone? Or yeah, I don't what know are how we long is... What are we listening to first? Uh, should we probably the, the the simple. The first yeah. recording, maybe? Yeah. And then we go to the complex? Or you want to go to the complex? Well, there's three recordings at this point. There's like the, you know, we had talked about a block design recording where there's just a single sound every about yeah. five seconds. And then there's a full collage, the grammar of sound, I think 1B. And then I sent Akshay the, uh, another piece that's much more complex this morning just to kind of see okay. how I, I think, differ. I think yeah, we look to the simplest, to, to the block, you know, uh, the more pure sounds right and yeah. then go on more complex and that i will like ask I, I share to the extent that you can because you're on zoom and, you know it's no idea situation but but um um clo close your eyes close your eyes uh the first time as, as you as you listen so, no, so let's let's cut visual stimulation right whatever the zoom might be or faces and just close your eyes and as soon as you hit the the start then close your eyes and and, and then just relax um, focus on the auditory stimulation and, um, and, and try not to move. Uh, so, Pepe, just, just, uh, sh I should still uh, try to synchronize it first, right? Um, yeah. 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 Well, actually, is it also is it all possible to have you? I mean, this might be slightly awkward, but to have you hold the tablet up so we can see it while you're listening. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. Uh, okay, I know that that may be kind of weird, but that, that's going to yeah. be well, the most uh, beneficial. Yeah, that's a good point. I say if you could place the tablet on the table and maybe move your monitor, your camera, so that you right. have to hold it. I, yeah, I mean, I don't, that could be awkward. Whatever's the most yeah. convenient. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Give me one second. I'm trying to see how to place this. It's on the... Yeah, you can put a book or something where you can place the tablet. Uh, because then the tablet will not move, so we we tend to move a little bit, right? If, if it's and, difficult, uh, you don't have to make that. If it's difficult work, so should I just hold it? If you can see from my screen. Yeah, I mean, if everybody that has okay. one wants to do that, that would be great. And then I could. Yeah. That'll help. Yeah, like that right there yeah. is fine. I mean, that just gives me some contact. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, place my hand because this is on the laptop, so um, it's gonna be hard to place okay. it on here. Um, and let's see is it uh, obviously actually i know we have your screen is it possible to go back to where everybody's a little bigger uh yeah so you don't have to share this yeah i think oh actually, maybe you, share... you have to share the screen to share the sound oh, actually, i'm sorry uh, let, can i just play and can you let me know if you guys can hear it uh, okay yeah, that's going to sound terrible. You're going to have to share yeah. the audio. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering because uh, if I do that, I don't know if I, my screen would be available. See, uh, this is why audio on Zoom is just like almost impossible. Uh, should I actually, yeah, maybe should I, um, or maybe someone else can play the sound and I can put it, pull it up. I, oh, I that's a cool idea. Box. I just send the Dropbox. Uh, folder so if someone else could just play it oh let's see but if i do that then if i share my oh, screen shit. then everybody's yeah. going to be little yeah <laughs> you're fine um, 
Um, yeah. Uh, right. Let me see. Still, you can make it bigger by setting it um, means to have a gallery on right side, right? And um, we can enlarge the gallery. If we we can, yeah, right. Oh, actually, okay, we'll you do can, that. Yeah, you can switch to the screen and the other one, like share screen or the other one. Um, okay, so can you do that, Akshay? You share your screen again with audio, and then I can we can try to make the gallery okay. change. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can. Yeah, you can uh, resize the the share yes. window. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Except all I see is Pepe now. Oh wait, here we go. There's an option to pin uh, whichever uh, screen you want to do on the side. You can do pin screen. Oh, I see. And I want to pin, let's see. There we go. Okay, Akshay, I, I, I am on you now. Okay. Give me one second. I think I accidentally closed the uh, connection oh. on the tablet. But we have some suggestion for Zoom to improve software. <laughs> let's see, can I pin two? Because let's see, who all is... We have two people that are going to be holding up devices, right? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Uh, can you also, too, I'm sorry, in the bottom, can you tell me your name who was also holding it? Because you say it says that you're Akshay, too, and you're not. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, I, that... <laughs> I saw that um, and I never figured it out. Like, yeah. wait a minute. How did you do this, Akshay? You can rename on, on, on your window when you appear at the top right. I think there are some options to rename the screen. I don't know why, how this happened. No, I, I can see you for identity theft. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sanjay. <Sanjeev. laughs> right. Yeah, it is hard to to align the camera with the tablet. It's a lot of reflection. So, Gab, is, is there any way that you can place the tablet on, uh, with some support on your desk and then focus your camera on the tablet? Because that will eliminate the, the little movements of the hand and maybe the reflection. Can I hear the sound now? Yeah, that yeah. sounds infinitely better than it did earlier. Yeah. Let me yeah, uh, much better. Let me close my eyes for a few seconds just to have a stable starting point. Yeah. Yeah, and if I you can keep them closed. Okay. You know, that would be the best. And rest your hands if possible too. I don't know why all tablets don't just have a little kickback piece of plastic on them that lets them stand up. They used to, I feel like. Most cases used to have that. Can I try it? Uh, it's going to be too. That's going to be hard. <laughs> I'll just keep it here. <laughs> all right. Thank God, that's great. I think that your tablet is now not moving and we can see very well. So uh, as... So you have a tablet, close your eyes, at least for part of it. I know you want to see your own brainwaves, but you close your eyes and we will focus only on the auditory stimulation.
very good. So I could see small fluctuation in the signals. They were aligned with the onset of the sounds, and they became larger. I mean, while we're, since we can talk a little here, Pepe, can you, so these the four different regions that I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, the, like, we'll say top, I guess, left, and then left front, and then right front and right. Well, can right. you tell me what those are and what, how to think about those? Because I'm just- right. So on the figure, the, on the bottom four lines, right? There are four time series. Oh, yeah. the, first, the first and the last one, they are on the left or right temporal lobes here behind your ears, right? Okay. And this, this is, uh, this brain air is related to multi, multi-sensory integration and receives direct auditory input, right? So, so th this is, so the signal you get here and the processing that happens here is early, right? Is is what the brain is starting to to process these signals, okay. right? Um, and then the 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 two in the middle on the plot are here in prefrontal cortex, right, on the left and the right side, and um, and these are you no know, higher order cortical areas, right? So they are more Cognitive. These are more sensory. These are more okay. cognitive. So, uh, so the, you know, the, when they get here, they have been highly processed, and they have been integrated with other things. Gotcha. Right? Okay. If if you know, the integration depends on the effect of that, right? So if if, if that has some meaning and trigger a memory, for example, you will expect to to be to to have that reflected here, mm -hmm. right? And and you may use as a stimulus, an acoustic stimulus, as a reminder, as a trigger to do something, or or just a more, uh, you know, visceral response, right? Uh, just just the, the raw um, value of it. Um, so so again, more sensory, more cognitive. Left part of the hemisphere, right part, left, right. In, in fact, you know. There are many studies that suggest that a difference in the intensity of levers to right is called cortical asymmetry. It's already an, in, an indicator of 
more creative thought versus more, you know, quantitative, you know, rational talk, mm -hmm. uh, thought, right? So th there are different different things that we can look. Uh, over. Right. Well, I was just curious to see what those outside the left right ones obviously had a little more going on. Yeah. Um, with those. so I was just right. sort of trying to understand what I was seeing. Well, yeah, I didn't I mean, need to or, stop uh, everything. Uh, no, 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 no. I think these are. I mean, this is why we are having this, right? I mean, to, right. to answer this type of question, understand more of this. Um, no, so, you know, um, the the tablets are, are set up right now, you know, to, to show these signals with some level of amplification, right? And and as I just say, you know, once you record those signals, you can bring it to the computer, amplify them, making them larger, and do many things to, to understand exactly why it's changing, right? What I could see visually, right? Um, is that um, there were changes in the signals, you know, that were aligned with the onset of the block, right? Um, to to understand what happens from block to block, right? We will need to uh, use the computer, right, to uh, to uh, analyze that information. Uh, the signals were very clean because they were steady and they were with the eyes closed and they were not moving. So this is the you know. I would think this is very ideal situation, right? Um, and um, no, so so one limitation we we all have, be be in the lab, looking at EEG signals, right, uh, brain signal, or at the clinic where doctors use, you know, they use this time series like the ones that we just show to detect medical complication, right, is that um, uh, you, you need a lot of training to, under, to visualize and, and see uh, and diagnose things from the signal, right? Um, uh, and we're limited by what our visual system, which is very powerful, can do, right? So, so one, 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 uh, one, one use or, or one uh, way to augment that is, you know, if we take these brain signals and turn them into sound, then we could look at the signal and we can listen to the signals and we have very powerful sound analyzer, right, in the, in the mm -hmm. brain. Um, which are, in a way is what we want to do, right? We want to close the loop, right? Uh, um, um, you know, as we listen, that's gonna change our brain activity and we connect the brain activity to the machine, the grammar of sound generator, so that it picks right. things from there right. based based on the effect that you have at that point, or right. maybe a little bit before. Right. So this, this uh, so we are doing sonification in a way, right? right. Uh, it's an indirect sonification uh, um, because we are associating the grammar with the brain activity. Right. Uh, can we listen to the uh, the other the, like the sound grammar of sound one B? I think it is Akshay. Yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to set up a camera real quick. Uh, I think it's going to be stable. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just curious to see if that, um, yeah, because it was very, very little was going on, obviously. Um, I think, I don't know. Again, I've never looked at anything like that ever in my life. Yeah. Um, so I, I wonder you can uh, increase the, the gain of the display a little bit, Ashay. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm going to try to switch this to uh, the camera. Uh, Shankar, that's a very nice, uh, yeah, signal that you are showing here. So you can keep the the tablet still. Yeah. So if if we wanted to, like for this next test here, yeah. we could go from we could go from uh, the grammar of sound one B, Akshay, and then when that's over, you could go ahead and just go into the other the, the memory dissolve intro. And I think it would be interesting to see the differences between those two because they're much, uh, there's much more just kind of generally going on in those, um, and they're full, they're they're built, um, instead they're, they're built very different. I think I mean like the grammar of sound at this point is 100% all electronic based tones. Right. The stuff in memory dissolve is a lot of that, but it's also mixed with uh, acoustic instruments, and I'm sort of curious if that has any um, different effect.
Can you all see my tablet right now? Yes. On the screen? Okay. Wait, uh, is that Akshay? Yeah. That asked that? No, I can't see Akshay. Uh, Akshay is just his name right now. Oh, so the, the screen is not visible? So he's using the camera to aim to the tablet. That's why you cannot see him. Uh, Amos, can you see But him? I'm saying I can't see his, uh, I see, I see uh, Senclap's tablet just fine. Akshay, it's just your name is all I'm seeing. Is that the same for all, or is everybody else seeing yeah, Akshay? I, mean, I, I see Akshay's screen right now. I think. Yeah, I see Akshay. He's sharing screen his on, screen on the main window. Oh, I'm sorry. He's sharing his screen. I have a big grid pulled up. I'm sorry. I see what you've done. Oh, this makes more sense. Okay. 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 Oh, Zoom windows and the ways you can organize them. Oh, I know I can do this. Aha, that makes sense. Okay, um, now you can see the... Uh, yes, yeah, so I can see you and then I have, I have uh, Senclaps and just a, uh, its own window by itself over here, which is great. So wait, uh, can you not see my... Uh, no, no, I can, we're good. I, I didn't realize yeah. that it was on the share screen. I got it, I was looking for it in the, in right. the grid. And just to make sure, can you hear the sound? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna play the other one. Uh, do you want to memory dissolve or the second one? Um, I want to do the second. I want to do memory dissolve last. Okay.
So I think I think that it was very clear uh, that the most responsive channels were the most sensory channels. That yeah, absolutely. At the end. So and you could see, you know, changes right that that were aligned with uh, with different aspects of the sounds, and you know, uh, you you could think, for example, about say say we were to segment specific sound for some duration and so we will get the pattern that that, mm -hmm. that that was the outcome of that and then we could see how often and how similar this pattern repeats before or after right if if, if this pattern repeat again Right. Mm -hmm. So we, we could focus in terms of pattern recognition to see, okay, this is the pattern we get, right? When this type of sound, you know, uh, plays back, right? And so this is, you know, very high level, right? So we still don't know what's the meaning, but we see that this sound is related to this pattern. Right. right. The and there was way a lot. We know th yeah. yeah the, the same way we know, you know, we reach out to something, this pattern is what we expect to see, right? So um, now another comment, uh, another observation is the middle channels, the, the more cognitive, they, they tend to show more fluctuation, even though they were much smaller mm -hmm. towards the middle and the end, right? I, I don't know if you noticed that, but, but so my thought on this is, you know, as a she, this is a hypothesis, right? But as a she was immersive, you know, immersed in, in the sounds, maybe, uh, you know, it took some time for, for his brain to sort of assimilate that and, and, and produce something. I don't know what, what going inside your head, uh, Shay. Uh, what, you no, know, but I, I noticed that as well. I thought it was yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's almost like the more you settled into what you were hearing, the more those, um, those middles opened up a little bit. I mean, and not much. And I've never seen, that's the first time in my life I've ever even looked at anything like that. So I really don't know what I'm, yeah. what I'm seeing, but I, I can, I could tell, I took a bunch yeah. of screenshots because I thought it was interesting to see the differences between the two. And then, so yeah. like, so you mentioned, there were, there were some patterns. There were these kind of like quick up. Yeah. Ramps. These, yeah. what did those sort of mean? What are those like quick ramps up and quick ramps down at well, times, you but know, mainly so, up. It was, yeah, what is well, that? Well, so, you know, uh, uh, a couple of observations, right? So uh, you see more simple and more complex patterns, right? You see some that are smaller, some that are larger, and, and this. And, and so basically what you're looking at is a, a different, uh, uh, different type of brain oscillations mixed together, mm -hmm. right? And, and they create more complex visual patterns for us to see, right? Now, uh, um, normally, you know, um, when... Uh, a sound, you know, a broad change came in is when you saw these sudden changes or some, or some brands. Well, you know, uh, I tell you, I noticed them almost more when there were long, the, the longer bits of sound, when those would evolve, I almost feel like that is when there would be more ramps as opposed to quick sounds. The, the longer the, ones seemed to give, I, I thought, again, yeah, first well, time the, looking at it. Yeah, so, so the, the quick, so quick, 
sounds, we tend to have an, uh, what we call an evoke response, right? That tends to be very sharp or short lasting. Mm -hmm. While sustain the stimulus, right? The sustain stimulus will, will, will sort of create resonance or will create some you know, uh, sustained response that may increase right. over time or decrease over time. Now, th this is the type of observation that requires analysis offline to understand, to characterize this, right? So we could right. look at frequency, amplitude, location, and many other things, right? And also, you, you, you saw the first and the last one. So we have two years, right? So we expect some level of correspondence, but we also know that there are different differences in how the brain processes sound from the left or the right hemisphere, right? Yeah. Um, for example, one hemisphere tends to focus more on, on, on long time constants versus the other one is more transient, right? So, and you saw differences between the first and the, and the last one for that reason, right? So sure. uh, I, I could not say more we are actually analyzing that, but visually speaking, um, mm -hmm. I would not expect to see exactly the same trait, but I would expect to see correspondence, which I right. saw, and I saw, well, and I saw differences. Let me ask this, um, and yeah. again, I feel like I'm getting into what, you know, you would say, well, is this a dumb question? But there are no dumb questions, I know. No, there are no so dumb questions. When I look at that, because when, when I look at that, I see the left and the right, obviously, as a stereo field, um, yeah. two speakers. Someone that, let's say, is deaf in their right ear, would they... Would, would we get any sort of reading from that side of them? Or would that be as if the speaker is turned off or panned far left and you get nothing from the right? Do you know? It, 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 so it's an interesting question. And uh, uh, I, I know what happened when you have a blind eye. Okay. You know, I, I haven't seen the case with the ears. Um, uh, it, it's basically nothing is happening in the sensory areas. So they're just like, again, it's like if they, so let's just say that those- You, 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 you tend to see some, some, some background activity, but that, that doesn't follow. But it's you know, nothing it, compared it, to the good eye? It's like, there's a- is there, there's No, a, no, nothing compared to the good eye, okay. except, except that if you train a person, right, that is blind or has some sensory uh, um, deficit on one side, the brain tries to- reorganize and provide another function to that area that's not being used, right? So for example, if, uh, one example would be, um, if you are blind, right? So right. visual cortex is not being used because there is no input, right? So that area might become more related to movement, right, than right. visual, um, right? You know, I almost so, so, wonder, I'm sorry, go ahead. This is like all of a sudden I have a 400,000 ideas that don't, that don't make any sense. But like, I'm almost, because I'm just, I always relate all of this back somehow to just, you know, like I said, I see, excuse me, I see those outside lines. And I think of that as I'm looking at two different speakers and we have our left and our right and we can yeah. pan around. So say someone cannot hear in their right ear, but they can in their left. So we get a signal from their left. What if it, what if you could somehow in real time, I mean, this is science fiction, I know, but like yeah. copy, what if you could copy the sound that's happening in the left and somehow send it to the right side, even though the right side couldn't hear it, could the brain sense it somehow? And could, that doesn't yeah, well, probably you know, make sense, but yeah, that's no, that, interesting. That's a good question. I mean, they are auditory processes, right? Okay. People have artificial cochlea, right? Because the, 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 the sensory organ is in the cochlea. Right, uh -huh. the, the most you know, and and and, and that sensory organ sends those signals to auditory cortex, which is what we are measuring. So we are measuring in auditory cortex already a signal that has been processed both at the cochlea, right, and and then in cortex, right. So it's sensory, it's more sensory, but it's not purely sensory, right. It has already been processed, right. Um, and and so if you are deaf. You know, at, at the cochlear level, at the input level, right? then a cochlear implant or prosthesis will restore some, some sound. But does it actually, to that person that has yeah. the, this is so crazy to me all of a sudden. So the, the person that has the artificial cochlea, yeah. will they then feel as if, will they sense that they're hearing sound from over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that, it's, you know, it's, these, these are very rudimentary. 
uh, prosthesis, right? They, they will right. they hard. So they will they can locate, you know, they can they they can hear a spectrum of sounds, maybe not with the same quality or, you know, uh, or, uh, yeah. Uh, but but they can do. Now remember, um, so we have two hemispheres. So what the right brain does to those signals is slightly different from what the left brain does to those signals, right? Right, and that would be the weird thing of if you were able to just straight copy one side and send it to the artificial cochlea on the other side, it would be perceived not in necessarily a natural way, I guess. Or if that's, you know, that's not even, yeah. a, uh, well, I don't know. So, it, it, so, so mm -hmm. if it is the prosthesis at the cochlear level, I think uh, you should have that asymmetry in cortex. If, but if you were to uh, stimulate cortex directly, Right, so you have a cortical prosthesis instead of a sensory prosthesis in the cochlea. Uh -huh. Then that that will be very critical, right? If if you just copy, that will not work well, because the brain is not designed to process copies, but it processes information in di slightly different ways, different time scales, different okay. you know. Okay. It's like having a different type of filter. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't know. I just, I've never, that was interesting to see that and see how those sort of move. I've, just, I've never been able to visually see someone hearing something before. And, and so and that's you, kind of you, cool. You, and, you know, we, uh, I share the recording, so I, I think we can uh, zoom in and, and look at in more detail at some of these patterns. Right. And that's so cool. You can okay. see. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, can we check out the no. other, can we check out the other piece too? And then we can keep talking because I'm just curious to see because it's such a, it's a very different thing. That last thing was a yeah. much more calm, chill kind of thing. This has much more. I mean, it is that, but it has more going on. Yeah. So I say, can you increase the gain of the display a little bit more? Um, maybe it's hard coded there. It's hard. Okay. So it's yeah. gonna take time. So okay, let, let's let's look at what you have now. We can do it offline. You know, we can yeah. generate some plots. Uh, Hey, while you're saying that, I had a question for Amos. Yeah, yeah, Christian, what's up, man? Um, what if you were to send a new file where different sounds would be playing on different sides of um, ears? Like, let's say this is going to happen a little dun, bit dun, more, dun, dun, right? Dun. This will happen more in the next piece, actually. Um, I mean, the the last two things we listened to could not be more just a white piece of paper at the end of the day. Um, nothing is going on on a panning level or anything like that. This next piece does have more going on, but no, that's a good question. Okay. And now, <clears throat> sorry, I, I did, I mean, is that, are you asking that to see if there was more going on over here, if we would see that in the lines? Is that your thought? It, it's really a follow-up to your question. I think the panning idea would really help see if, um, let's say a different signal spike, um, right. because right now they're symmetrical. Oh, they're totally just smack in the middle, which I didn't think until until I'm seeing this, I didn't even think of that. But and again, these are just total tests. But this piece that we're about to listen to, definitely, I'm not totally sure, but it has more going on panning wise, I think. But that would be a cool test too, to take to these things and pan them far left and far right. Um, like even like in this block design test we have where each short sound and each medium sound have their time in between. It'd be cool if one were on this side and then the next sound were over here and the next sound over here. I, I really like that idea. I've, just, I've never thought about seeing Again, I see it as speakers just because I just do. I've never thought about seeing a visual representation of a speaker over speaker. here and a speaker over here. And so now that I have, it's, it's a totally different way to think about, you know, how we can sort of test this stuff. Um, but Christian, I, I appreciate you mentioning that. I think it's a really good thought. And I think this one will do a little better job of that. But again, it's not designed specifically for it. But I, this piece does have more, it's a more uh, full piece of something it's a more final sort of realizing and this is only this is the first four minutes of a 14 minute piece of music so we're only listening to the intro but it's it has some much more gnarly stuff going on cool cool thank you yeah absolutely thank you i appreciate the ideas
I think it was, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the end of that. We hear that 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 the the, the prefrontal channel were more responsive. Um, 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 the other thing that I see, like I saw, like chunks. You know, like you, you could see chunks of information. You know. Yeah, and it was all based around strings, actually. Anytime the strings were, the cello especially, the cello was there and the strings were playing together, there was more going on in the cognitive realm. Um, right. When it's just yeah, piano, the, 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 it's not as much. It's, the, yeah, visually speaking, I'm right? Because remember- Yeah, that, visually that, that speaking. Thing that, like, that, that, that thing that we cannot see just by visual inspection and the, and the data, but, but you're right. Uh, I, I also saw the same. Oh yeah, you can see, um, I mean, when the cello would come in, it was a different ball game, it's, which is interesting. Um, right. You know, just to be able to sort of visualize and see something like that is, um, you know, it's interesting yeah, I, when you, well, it's interesting to sort of take an idea and the different ways. I mean, that, that's obviously, I mean, that's a piece of music. That's a finished piece of music that yeah. is the intro to it. But to be able to visualize it like that is a completely different way to see it. Because I can put it in logic. I can see it in color. We can put it in RX and do a sound spectrum of it. Right. You can look at it in so many different ways. Um, and obviously right. everybody's going to have a slightly different, you know, reading of something like that. And we're just using, you know, a muse, but just seeing just the concept of like, well, when you bring in the cello and the violin together in this manner with these notes and this chords, more cognitive thought process is going on. Like just that idea alone is nothing that I've ever, 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 ever as a composer or whatever I do, I've never thought of that. That's never in the thought process really. I can go, oh, I like it more. And it invokes more emotion, I think, to some people. Some people might hear it and be like, this is boring or stupid, or they might say it sounds scary or, you know, everybody's going to do it differently. But just to be able to, to think, you know, when those two instruments happen like that, it elicits more of a cognitive response. Like just that yeah. 
fact alone from <laughs> watching Akshay's monitor um, yeah. and Sankov's monitor. That's that's just into. I mean, for me, that's a. It's it's almost like he can all of a sudden uh, just think about it in a different way, and that's cool. So that's yeah. that's all I wanted yeah. to say. Was, no, that's interesting. It's not because you know you could think. Let's say we use um, some transformation of of the more cognitive challenges that that, that she was recording from and the very way metric right mm -hmm. and that you can use you know a, i want to have you know a, a melody right that 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 requires more cognitive engagement versus the sensory one yeah exactly so if, you know you could use that to actually design you could, yeah, you, mean, you absolutely could. I mean, to me, it sounds like a film director that wants to try to elicit something and they need to be like, well, at this moment, we need to have more of a cognitive response. Right? And film right. directors would never say that because they say different things. But oftentimes film directors, what they tell me is they don't know how to speak music. And I tell them, I don't want you to speak music. I don't want you to tell me what chords you want and what instruments you want. But just, it's just funny to think about. They could say, well, we would really like between two minutes and seven minutes to have a much more you know, cognitive response uh, from the film. And that's just fun. Like it's a, just a different, the right. language changes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so is it this yeah. translation between, between grammars, right? That, that uh, it's same with visual stimulation, right? I mean, what, what's right. the effect you want? Yeah, I know. And I mean, so, and that piece too, that piece is actually, I mean, it's a visual thing. Helena's seen it, Pepe, I think you've seen it. Yeah. I've been working yeah. on it. I'm reworking it right now for a project. And so when I will listen to that, I see things too. And just to think if people were to watch the full thing in this situation, how right. different that would be. But I like that we're just breaking it down musically and it's just looked at right. um, from an audio. Yeah, that would be another interesting step, you know, when you add the visual uh, stimulation. I, well, but at this point, yeah. that's not, I, I mean, I, yeah, no, just, no, yeah. But just breaking, that would just I, I like these, some of these. Well, I like that it's just for, just four channels to sort of start yeah. with and think about. Um, right. Because I, I would be overwhelmed, I think, with more than four. I'm going, okay, cool. They're right. hearing something they're right in their left ear, and there's some cognitive thought going on. Like that is right. progress for me in thinking about right. it. Um, and you know, I think so. These, so I know actually, you're going to be able to go and record this to where I can look at it a little easier. Um, I, I'm this conversation today has made me, for the first time, more curious about Hertz and about how those can be measured and how those can be read, and those are starting to feel a little more important in this overall design of this than they have before. Is, is what we are looking at, it, is it possible to see those hurts on this or is that not with the Muse? Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, yeah okay, I, because I, I, obviously I'm just seeing, I don't, I don't, you know, I couldn't say, I saw things moving around, but I couldn't say like between here and here, between here, you know, we, on that we have, level. We, we have recording, right? So we right. can uh, analyze them yeah. very accurately, right? And, and, well, and, what, what I'm starting to think is, I mean, what I've just written, I've written down a whole bunch of randomness, but the, you know, because yeah. what, what we're trying to obviously do right now is to move forward the idea of how do we map a grammar of sound to something that the uh, BCI can read that then plays back. So, you know, perhaps it is if it were to be able to read the Hertz and between when such and between such and such a set of Hertz that's red, then blank, that's what pulls, that's what makes the trigger. Cause that's sort of where I am right now. It's like, how do we decide how to, how do we decide what's going to trigger the sounds? And after so, this conversation, after this chat today and watching this just a little bit measurement wise Hertz, as opposed to this area or this area, the Hertz right. from a certain area, that seems to be a way to dial it in a little bit more. And I'm just, this is just me thinking out loud right now. Well, I mean, you have, uh, let me say, you, you have uh, degrees of freedom here, right? So, so by looking at more sensory versus more cognitive, you can manipulate that aspect, right? Right. By, by looking at the hertz, you know, the, the, you know, the frequency, you, know, you can manipulate that aspect, right? Um, how, how those frequencies are the shape of those patterns relate to the instruments that are part of the composition, right? right. So, so what we can do, you know, is, is uh, now that we have this recording, which actually were very clean. So thank you, our chef, for putting that effort and also thank us. Thank us. Um, we, can, we can sort of tease apart these different things to share and say, look, these are the possibilities, right? Right. You can, you can control this domain more sensory versus more cognitive. You can control this domain more, you know, amplitude oscillation 
versus less. You can uh, you can right. co uh, control amplitude. You can you know there are different things, right? That that. And, and and so we can and also we can look how they are how close they are from Arche to Sankar, for example. right, right. What's um, common? What's different? Right? Because yeah. remember, I would expect the more sensory to be very similar, because we share a lot of sure. the structure, but I expect the more community to like, start to be different. Right. Because we and, have and, different... and that's where the you know that's that's where the effects of the century actually start to matter for the individual. Exactly. Exactly. Um, right. Interesting. No, it's so, cool. I, that, that's it. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I don't know what yeah. else to say. No, no, uh, it's 11 30. So, uh, um, uh, I, oh, know, right. I think this has been uh, um, really, I think, a, a way of an eye opener, right? And, and yeah, also, I mean, it's been, it's been actual. It's been, there's some actual yeah. seeing now. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. So, yeah, I agree. Right. So, so what we can do uh, in the next week is to, um, uh, you know, process these this two recordings, right? Uh, get a little bit more the, the fine grained information and see how that relates so that we can share that with with all and um, and, and also try to figure out you know for you know a, an actual demonstration real time how you know we need to program you know, some code to to be able to 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 align the playback with the um, um, uh, with the recording and also think about you know, once we analyze the feature, what feature makes sense to close the loop, right? Right. Um, and, and so, so I think that will be the, the step. Uh, something that, that um, we would like to do to capture this, this conversation in these, uh, you know, four sessions, right? Is uh, to, to write, you know, a chapter that we would like to publish in a book uh, right. um, on this series, right? And so, um, um, we will self organize and see, you know, uh, who the students is the lead on drafting a draft. But we would like to ask everybody for input because everybody will be on that. The idea is everybody will be on that. And and so certainly, very important is what's the artist input here? What's the artist motivation? And 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 how do you see this, you know, helping uh, understand or even provide a new tool set? for you as an artist, right? No, absolutely. I mean, I think just what has been, you know, the, the idea we're working on aside, just like be under, just being able to think of, oh, the violin and the cello together conjure a more cognitive experience. Like just those, that sort of language and those sort of ideas, um, you know, it's interesting. That, that's for me, what's starting to become interesting is the way anytime I can take something that I feel like quote unquote makes sense to me and it feels like a new layer has been peeled away. That's exciting, and that's interesting. Great. So what I would say is, um, we will get back to you. We yeah, need of course. a few weeks to, to get all this information in, yeah. uh, in a form that uh, we can uh, share. And, and then uh, you know, let us know if you're coming here and you can meet in May. Um, it would probably June. be June, but you and I can talk about that. Um, yeah, we we can talk about we'll talk it, about that uh, another time. Or anytime, you know, we are here, right? So oh, absolutely. So time yeah. that that you find because it would be great to to meet in person and try it. No, it no, would it would. To, yeah, you know, and, and well, we can definitely, you know, send you. No, we'll send you a headset in case I you want. I think that would help a lot. I think that would help to, to experiment can, your first. Well, then I can really test. I mean, you can only do so much when you're sort of with a group of people and you're trying to come up with questions or answer questions and. Um, you know, you, I know I need that time just hitting random notes going, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, and you know, when I'm with you guys, I want to feel like I'm not just saying, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. Um, no, no, this, no, this is, this has been great. So, uh, any other questions or comments? No. Yeah. So we have, uh, we're developing a website for, for this, this workshop. So we now have the recordings there in case you want to access them. Uh, okay. We will also send you the link in case you right. want to revisit. And um, I thank you again. This has been really, really interesting. And, you know, I think we are everybody, everybody's learning uh, from, from this interaction. And, and, um, um, and, and, you know, I'm looking forward to also apply this to other domains, like visual domain. You know, I know how is interested in that. Um, and, but um, um, it, just, just a final thought, right? Say, say uh, somebody is actually blind. Right, but but you know we understand these effects, right? And we can redisplay the information 
to other sensory organs like you know tactile or or visual right to to communicate that right so you know th this goes back to neural interfaces right how, how do we restore function right um so that's that's part of of, of our interest um, and of course the other one is you know we, we are we are attempting to to reverse engineer how the brain works right right um, and, and 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 this is a nice example of how the arts can really talk to the science to get beyond what is is, is currently done right so i really i really thank uh, everyone and have a great week uh, and we will be in touch okay yep thank okay you. thank you guys i'll talk with you soon bye-bye Th thank you bye